Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Google Forms and we're specifically going to look about checkboxes and checkbox grids. So to start my Google Form, I like to start my Google Drive by creating a folder to keep things in. So I clicked on New and created a folder and then I clicked on New and I created my form. This is the form that we're going to look at today. I always start my forms when I'm using them with my students in a Google Classroom by asking their first and last name. You don't need to do this on a lot of assignments, but it does help to do this on a form, on every form, so that when you look at the responses, especially if you look at the responses in a spreadsheet, the students' names are there, and by asking the first and last name as two separate questions, you'll be able to alphabetize by last name if you want to. So, if you've turned the form on as a quiz, this is a very appropriate way to use a checkbox. This question has been set up so that it has more than one right answer. And when I clicked on the answer key, I was even able to say these were the right answers that I wanted to use and that I would accept, or these are the answers I would accept as the right answers and it has a point value. And when this is taken as a quiz, it will even show the students what the right answers are. This is what we formally usually think of as a checkbox grid. And it has items in a column and in each row. And if the, if the, if it, when it's set up, if it's required, it will require a response in each row. And this is what it looks like when you set it up. So you set up what you want each row to be and what each column to be. And then when you click off, this is what it will look like. The next question we're looking at is one you might look at in a survey. This was one that you might have, if you filled out our live learning, learning session survey, this is one we considered using which topics you'd like more sessions on. And then we ended up sending it out as a checkbox grid. So this is also a checkbox grid like the one we looked at earlier that had multiple columns, but it only has one column. And I'll look, let's look just a second at the preview button. If I were to take this, what it looks like when I'm taking it, So this is the one that's really set up as a quiz and has answers on it. And then this is the one that is required and it does ask that the person answer. I'm asking up here for you to check a couple of things per box, but it really doesn't limit them. They really could do more if they wanted to. It, it, so there isn't anything restricting them. There was a restriction that it said if it, they didn't answer something in every single row, then it was asking for more. This is usually what's used in a survey if it's wanting information. So what we were asking for, which, which sessions do you want more training on? In a classroom, I taught kindergarten, so what you might ask a parent is which ways they'd like to help in the classroom. Would they want to go on field trips or provide snacks? And so I could fill out all these I'd like more information on. And this has become my preference lately when you're asking an opinion type question where you're gathering data and I wanted to know which tools. Remember this one is set up more as a checkbox grid. So I might answer that these are the ones I want more training on and then I'd hit submit. There wasn't a big difference in the way you were looking at it as the student. I don't think, I know that in the check boxes, um, I'll click submit another response. Down here in the check boxes, these are check boxes, the check boxes are on the left. And if I set this up as a grid, you have to deal with the fact that the box is kind of further away from the answer. But this is the way we sent it out to you all on the last survey, and I'll show you why. So I'm not going to fill this one out again. Okay. If I'm back in teacher view, so in the edit mode, I'm going to click on responses. 
and I've already clicked on the green button to make a spreadsheet. So the first time you click on it, it will say, do you want to create a spreadsheet? And it will name it the same as your quiz. And then it'll put the um, in parentheses behind it responses. If you come in here later and click on it again, that's okay because it won't create a second one. It will just open up the previous one. I've already got it open up here and I'll show you kind of what we came up with. So we've got the student's first and last name. Again, I told you why I like that in case I want to alphabetize by the student's last name. I would click on one of the names and click data and sort. And now the names are in alphabetical order in case I need to put that into my grade book, into Infinite Campus, whatever I'm using. It says in this column, column F, what a, it was the which equations equal 15 and they listed all the equations. It doesn't matter to me that these are a jumble and that I'd have to read all these because I don't have to read this at all because it was an auto graded quiz. And over here in column C, is the grade where it graded that quiz, that answer. So it doesn't bother me that in column F, the questions are kind of jumbled. That's to me the appropriate place to use a checkbox question. And then I use the grid and they selected more than one thing because I had more than one column. And again, if you were going to disaggregate this data, you would be going through some of to figure out because there's sometimes more than one thing in each each question. So um, I don't know that I use that one too much. What I wanted to show you, I'm going to come over a little bit further to the right, scroll over. In column K, this, and I got in here earlier and, and colored this yellow, it's the reason it's all yellow. But this was the one where I asked you what training you would like next week. And you could, tr you could ask for a lot of different things. And then as the teacher or as my department, we're coming back. How many people want training in Screencastify? Well, I would have to come through here and say, okay, that one did. And I mean, th there were over 100 people. There were close to 200 that answered this survey. I could do a find, but it would take me a while to, to pull out, disaggregate all that data and pull it all out. What I told you I prefer was the checkbox grid because this, where I'm highlighting in blue, this is where the information, the same information that's in yellow is over in blue, but because it's checkbox grid, it pulled it out into every single form. And then to make it easier for my coworkers to look at, of course, we didn't have the, we really didn't do these bright columns. We sometimes come in and highlight a group of, of like this in a color that's not too bad to look like at, so we know that those questions all went together. And then we came in here and I would highlight certain words and change the font color, something like that. So that if I was looking along here, trying to see when I'm looking in here later, trying to see, oh, because there's a lot of text up here. I can see this is the column about Google Slides. And out of the four people that have responded so far, Two more people want more training on Google Slides and two more people want Google Docs. Look how much easier this is to read than having to read the yellow column and trying to figure out how much everybody liked and, and which more which training they like better. So this column K, the yellow one, was done with a checkbox and the next question was a checkbox grid, which made my phone my spreadsheet go on because it had a lot of answers in it you know it, it's extended a long way it keeps going because there's so many things in there but boy is it a lot easier to read what's in each column that is the whole purpose of this training for me to stand on my soapbox and tell you the difference between those two questions